Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's almost graduation season, meaning a lot of you may be thinking about getting a job really soon. In last week's video, I shared my CV and portfolio, and in this video, I thought it would be nice to go over some tips and tricks on actually applying to jobs. This is an ongoing series I'm doing about job hunting in the UK, so if you're interested, I've left the link to the playlist down in the description box below. And as usual, if you like content like this, don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out. Before you start applying, we need to figure out what you're looking for. Are you restricted geographically? Are you looking for a practice that specializes in one area of architecture? Are you looking for a specific role like a part one architectural assistant or anything related to architecture, design or art? Job hunting and applying is a really time consuming process. So the more specific you are, the more it'll help you hone down things drastically and save you a lot of time. On the other hand, if you don't really know what you're looking for yet, that's also completely fine because you're at the beginning phases of your architectural career and you can pick up a lot of general knowledge about the architectural industry and any practice and just figure it out along the way like many of the architects did. The big questions that graduates have is whether you should apply to a big practice or a small practice. I've talked about the pros and cons of working in both a small and big practice in the previous video and I've put the link of the video in the description box down below if you want to consider it in a more detailed manner. It varies between practices, of course, but generally the pros of working in a big practice are a nicer CV, better support and resources. But the cons are you may be stuck working on similar tasks if you're good at it for a prolonged period of time, and you may struggle to pick up new skills and knowledge about the project or the industry. It also may feel quite corporate and harder to make connections. The pros of working in a smaller practice is that you'll get a more holistic view on the design and building process in the architectural industry as you'll have the opportunity opportunity to work on every procedure. A smaller firm may also mean a nicer working environment. The cons of working in a smaller practice generally are less resources and support and a seemingly weaker CV. Now that you have a brief idea of what you're looking for, let's work out the next steps. The first one is looking for vacancies. The first place that you can look for vacancies is definitely on a company's website. So if you already have some firm that you want to apply to, go check on their websites first because that's that's usually the first place they'll advertise for a job vacancy. The second is social media. Social media is so prevalent these days that a lot of firms are using it to promote things, especially if they're looking for a specific applicant for a specific role. So check out their Instagram and check out the most famous professional connection platform, LinkedIn. The third one is job platforms. A lot of firms use a third party to help them promote their job adverts and so you can definitely look online for these. Most legit and trustworthy websites that I find for architecture jobs are Design, Reba Jobs, and Arc Jobs. You can also look on other websites like Indeed or Read but because they're not really tailored for the architectural industry sometimes it might be quite messy and things might be quite outdated. The fourth one which not a lot of people may use for job hunting is Google Maps. So there are a lot of firms that that may not be on LinkedIn or Instagram, but you still want to be able to increase your chances of landing a job. And so the way I would do it is I go on Google Maps, I zoom in into a city, and then I type in architecture firms, and Google does all the work for me by pinpointing all the architecture firms in that area. And based on that, I can do some research on the architectural firms that they have provided. And if I'm interested, I can continue and apply. Next, we're moving on to cover letters. I only did cover letters for practices I really wanted because because you need to tailor them to each practice and it can be a really time consuming process. Even though I just tailor one paragraph out of the whole letter, substituting different firms values and different projects from the firm that I wanted to highlight on. To save time, I followed this structure for all my cover letters. First of all, it's an intro, and then my architectural experience professionally and academically, and then my architectural experience in an extracurricular manner. Next, why I wanted to work in the practice, and last but not least, expressing gratitude. The cover letter that I did is, Dear Sir, Madam, and then the intro, I'm writing to apply for the part one architectural assistant position at your firm, and I'm excited to bring my expertise, passion, and dedication to the practice. As someone who has worked in a variety of rebuild work stages and with a range of clients, I'm confident that I can make a valuable contribution to your team. Second paragraph, my architectural experience academically and professionally. 
Over the past year, as a Part 1 architectural assistant, I've specialized in bespoke residential designs, working on projects that demanded a high level of creativity and attention to detail. My responsibilities included producing design proposals, creating 3D models, and preparing technical drawings. Through these experiences, I've developed a strong understanding of the design and construction process, as well as an appreciation for the importance of clear communication and collaboration with clients and team members. While I've gained invaluable experience experience in this area, I'm eager to broaden my expertise and expand my skill set to include other areas in architecture and post planning experience. The third paragraph will be my architectural experience in an extracurricular manner. In addition to my practical experience, I've taken the initiative to make architecture more accessible to underrepresented communities by creating events with Reba that brought architecture to a wider audience. Fueled by my passion for low technology sustainable architecture, I also participate in a life built project to construct a low carbon structure. These experiences allowed me to hone my communication and outreach skills while also contributing to a greater societal good. Moving on to the paragraph where I talk about a firm, I'm drawn to innovative approach to design and your dedication to sustainability. As someone who is deeply committed to sustainable design and construction, I'm excited at the prospect of contributing to your team and collaborating with other like-minded individuals. And last but not least, gratitude. Thank you for your consideration and I look forward to the opportunity to discuss my application further. This keeps your cover letter short and succinct, but also shows that you've done your research and shows initiative and effort. Now that you've sorted out your portfolio, your CV, you've looked for vacancies, and you've also written your cover letter, comes the last part, actually applying. Based on where you actually source the job vacancy from, there are actually a few ways that you can apply for a job. The first thing is through the company's website. If you found a vacancy or a job adverb on the firm's website, then there may actually already be a form or a certain procedure you need to follow according to their website to apply for the job. The second is on LinkedIn. If you've sourced the job advert on LinkedIn, they normally already have a button where you can apply right now and you can just fill in the things on LinkedIn and they'll send the application to the firm itself. Another way is sending emails. If you source the ad on Instagram, usually they'll provide an email for you to send your portfolio and your CV and your cover letter for the application of the role. When sending over an email for a job application, it's important to keep it short and succinct because nobody wants to read a paragraph. So I usually use this template. Feel free to use it too. Dear Sir, Madam, I'm writing to fill a part one architectural assistant position within your firm starting month, year. Attached is my CV, cover letter, and portfolio. I look forward to having a conversation about this opportunity with you. Thank you for your time and your consideration. Yours sincerely, and in your name. The last thing that you can do to apply for a job is handing in a speculative application. Many firms may not be looking to hire at the moment, but if you send in a speculative application, when they're actually looking to hire, usually they'll go through the speculative applications first before putting out job adverts. You'll have a good chance at landing an interview because not a lot of people actually do speculative applications. The competition is generally lower and it increases your chance. Now that you've submitted a job application, the next thing you need to do do is wait. It may be good to give the firm a call or a follow email if you haven't heard back in one or two weeks time, but do not pester the firm with multiple emails in a short span of time. And that's it for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. This is an ongoing series I'm putting together about job hunting in the UK. So if you're interested, I've put the link to the playlist down in the description box below. Next week, we'll be covering what you actually need to do after you've received an interview invitation. As always, if you like content like this, don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.